Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another edition of Rock's Garage. I'm your host, Dan, and on today's episode, we're going to be installing part number SEAT-761 on our EasyGo RXB. Now, before we get started, let's take a look at everything that comes in the kit and the tools we're going to need to get the job done. When you open up your kit, you're going to have your front and rear seat back brackets, as well as your vertical support. And then after that, we're going to have our flip frame. And after that, we have our foot plate. Next up, we have our rear seat back and seat bottom cushions. And finally, we have our handrails, our foot plate brackets, our seat back support boots, and finally, our box of hardware. Now that we've taken a look at all of the parts, let's take a look at the tools we're gonna need to perform the installation. First up, we have a cordless drill with a 3 8 drill bit. We have our cordless impact gun. We have a socket wrench and extension with a T25, a T45, a 15 millimeter, an 11 16 and a 17 millimeter socket. After that, we have a 10 millimeter, a 15 millimeter, and an 11 16 wrench. We have a number three and a number two Phillips head screwdriver, as well as a flathead screwdriver. We have a panel remover tool, and of course, some safety glasses. And now before we get started, we just wanna go over a few safety precautions. First, we're gonna set our parking brake. Then we're gonna turn our cart off, and if we have an electric cart, we're gonna flip the tow run switch to the tow position. Once all that's done, we're gonna start by removing the front seat back cushion. So in order to remove the front seat back cushion, we need to remove the two bolts that are on either side of the cushion. Now we wanna make sure that we're doing this with hand tools only as these bolts can strip out pretty easily. Now that we've removed the front seat back cushion, we're gonna go ahead and disconnect the top struts from the seat back brackets. Now, before we do that, we wanna make sure that we do put some kind of prop rod underneath the top so that it doesn't fall down on our head. Now that our top struts are disconnected, our next step is to remove our sweater basket assembly. And we're gonna do that by removing the two bolts at the bottom of each post. Now, in order to make this a little bit easier, we're gonna go ahead and remove our access panel and our two rear fender wells. While this is not necessary, this is definitely gonna make things a little bit easier. Now that our sweater basket assembly is removed, we can go ahead and also remove the factory boots that came with that sweater basket assembly. Once those are out, we can go ahead and install our new seat back bracket boots. And if we have some issues installing those, just use a flathead screwdriver to manipulate the boot until it goes into the hole. Now our next step is to install our new seat back brackets. Now, in order to determine what side is what, we wanna make sure that with the capped end of the bracket facing up, that the tab for the flip frame is facing the inside of the cart. So now that our new seat back brackets are installed, we're gonna go ahead and reattach our top struts. Now while we're doing that, we're also gonna put in our new rear seat back cushion brackets, and we're just gonna reuse our factory hardware. So when we're installing these new rear seat back brackets, we wanna make sure that the slope for the bracket faces up and the bend for the bracket faces the inside of the cart. Now we're gonna repeat the same process on the other side. Now before we install our vertical support, we need to remove the two bolts that are inside the bag well and drill those holes out to 3 8 using our 3 8 drill bit. So now with the holes drilled out, we can go ahead and install our vertical support. Now that our vertical support is loosely installed, we can go ahead and attach our flip frame.
So now that our foot frame is loosely installed, we can go ahead and install our foot plate. Now that our foot plate is attached, we can go ahead and attach our foot plate brackets as well as our handrails. Once those are on, we can go back through the entire kit and tighten everything down. Now that all of our hardware is tightened down and before we put our seat cushions on, we're going to go ahead and reinstall our access panel. Now if you removed your inner fender wells like we did, this is the time to put those back on. Now that your access panel is reinstalled, we can go ahead and install our front seat back cushion. Now that our front seatback cushion is installed, we can go ahead and install our new rear seatback cushion. So now that our two seatback cushions are installed, we can go ahead and install our new rear seat bottom cushion. Now when I'm installing these cushions, I like to line the two top corners up and then go from there with the rest of the screws. So I usually start on the passenger side top, get that mounted, and then I go over to the driver side top, get that mounted, and then once those two are in place, everything else will line up just great. Now, if you're going to be installing our 88 inch extended top along with this seat kit, you would need to use part number TOP-0108. And those are the new rear struts for the extended top on our 700 series seat kits. Now, if you're going to be installing those, those would just mount right here to the handrail and you would mark and drill those holes, making sure to keep everything lined up. Once you've installed that seat bottom cushion, that's going to wrap up the install on the SEAT-761 on our EasyGo RXV. Thanks for watching this episode of Rock's Garage, and I'll see you guys next time.